reforms to make the world a safer place. I feel we've done that. The world owes the Avengers an unpayable debt. You have fought for us, protected us, risked your lives. But while a great many people see you as heroes, there are some who prefer the word vigilantes. When we were sitting down and beginning to think of the third Captain America film, we realized that Winter Soldier and the fact that audiences had embraced that film all around the world gave us the leeway to do things that were tonally somewhat different than we'd done in our films in the past, but also do things that have incredible repercussions for the films to come. There's one storyline from the comics that is the epitome of bringing the Marvel characters to a turning point, and it's Civil War. Iron Man and Cap have such a good juxtaposition. They come from such opposite worlds in, in, in their beliefs and their personality, and it just builds this really wonderful friction. The concept of Civil War is very important to us. We felt like we needed to go in a, a radical direction if we were going to do another Captain America film. When you flip through the issues of Civil War, you'll have, in any given panel, a dozen characters fighting a dozen characters. And there are hundreds of characters over the course of that seven-issue book. It was always led by character, and then spectacle would follow. Marvel and Kevin particularly don't mind the big swings. So the thing that maybe some people might step away from and say, oh, it's too early for this, yeah. or we don't have enough characters or whatever, that we couldn't possibly do that, they go, let's try it. And in trying it and in, in developing it, we all, oh, this won't be exactly like the comic, but boy, this will be pretty cool. By this point, people know Steve Rogers very, very well. People know Tony Stark very, very well. We know how they work together, and we know that they have some issues with each other. They're very, very different people. You know, you may not be a threat, but you better stop pretending to be a hero. A hero? Like you? You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. The book, Civil War, is so grounded in this idea of Captain America leading one side versus Iron Man leading the other side that we just felt that if we were going to try it in the MCU, it was critical that we had those two components. Civil War became the overriding principle. It was like, you do realize we need Robert. Wow, it's so weird how you run into people at the airport. Do you think that's weird? Definitely weird. To me, what's super exciting is like Cap needs to grow and change and have darker, more complex challenges. And I think for Tony, it's like, you know, what are the real world challenges and ramifications of dealing with superheroes on planet Earth? There's no decision making process involved for me here. We need to be put check. Watching the two of them together and seeing them, you know, being in the moment and listening to each other was absolutely so much fun to watch. Everybody is always looking for ways to surprise themselves and surprise audiences about where we can go. And we had a very clear idea about how we wanted to do it, that with this movie. And I think once Robert got into that, he became very, very excited about it. And he's been an amazing collaborator on this film. It's no secret, I love Chris Evans. I deeply respect the guy and I learned from working with him. And he's also really reverential to me, which goes a long way. Downey might be my favorite actor. And it's just, it's such a, the, the, you know. I'm glad I, we spoke before this little sit down. The fact that now Iron Man and almost every Avenger is in Captain America Civil War showcases just how far we've come in the development of the cinematic universe. That we can now, with these beloved actors, these beloved, globally recognized iconic characters, bring to life some spectacular storylines from the comics is a dream come true. The movie is um, consciously an effort to bring some of the tone and style of Winter Soldier and merge it with a new style that we're going to use for Infinity War, which is a grander scale look and less handheld. So the styles are merged and as the movie progresses, it shifts from one tone and style to another. And that was very important to us. Yeah, this is going to be a great shot. Directing is storytelling. And when you hear them engaging you in the story and coming up with ideas and seeing the glint in their eye, the excitement about doing something like this, you know you have something special. Love the Russo. Love me some Russo's. We just have a, a pretty good line of communication open between us. There's nothing I don't like about them as directors. There's just kind of a simpatico with the way that I like to influence things and then step back and really follow their lead. It's just this kind of dance, this creative dance you want to have. They know these comic books and these scripts inside and out. I think it wasn't a fluke what they did on Cap 2. You know, and now coming into this, you see it. You see the footage. They just have an eye and a gift for telling these stories. Yeah, the wings pop out, he does that. 
as you come down. We're here on uh, day one uh, on set, and uh, what we're working on right now is, uh, is the first fight between Captain America and his rival. We gotta get out there. We want these fights to be big character moments. We don't want there to be fighting just for the hell of fighting. There's a lot of story coming into these fights. And Sebastian in the last one did a bit of fighting, quite a bit, but not as much as he did on this one. Seb put in so much work in pre-prep to train these fights. With Chris the same. Chris will pick up fights so quickly where if it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, they're so good you can use them. And that is a a better way to shoot fights because you see more of the actor, you can shoot wider, you don't have to hide anything when it's your real actors doing this combat. The Bucky apartment sequence, that was insane because that is like a kickstarter for action in this movie because it starts with the apartment, goes to the stairwell, goes outside the apartment and then into the second unit where they did that epic car chase. Three, two, one, action. Oh. Next to him, he just slips his arm in right before he jacks out the door. We follow the continuing story of the Winter Soldier, who Captain America cares very much about and who believes he can get his best friend back. Bucky was the guy who's always been there, he's always had his back, and Steve's a loyal guy. I'm sure there's a certain sense of guilt based on what happened to Bucky. Which Bucky am I talking to? Your mom's name is Sarah. You used to wear a newspaper in your shoes. As much as Civil War is the trappings of the film, it's really about Steve making a decision for the first time that's personal over sort of a global version of doing the right thing. I was really excited when I read the script. I didn't really know where they were going to take it because the playing field was so open they could have done anything with the character. What was fun about the script was that when you were reading him, you, didn't, you never knew where he was going to swing, which, which side of the fence. He might become the Winter Soldier, he might be Bucky Barnes. So there was a lot of playing room there, and that was, that was fun. More kills than anyone in Hydra history. And that was before the serum. You know, my main goal over the past three movies has been to find Bucky. So now that I've found him, is just trying to nurture a relationship between the metal arm guy. You were that in it. I was in it. You were in it. I was going from the beginning of the movie. Falcon, who is Cap's new brother in arms, is his best friend in the modern world. Full on Avenger. <laughs> hey, you're looking at an Avenger guy. Remember that. This guy. Yeah, thank you. Marvel has made a concerted effort to help Sam Wilson evolve into an Avenger. It's great. I love my new suit. I got my little splash of red. I got Tony Stark arised. Yeah, he high teched up my suit. And uh, I got Red Wing. Thanks, Sam. Don't thank me. I'm not thinking that thing. What I'm holding is the scale uh, model of Red Wing. A lot of the flying around we'll be doing with CG. But when we go out on set, we like to have lighting reference. So we'll shoot a shot with CG Red Wing. You won't see any Red Wing flying around, but afterwards we'll walk in and then pretend like we're flying Red Wing with the, the model on the stick. And then when it appears in the theater, it'll look uh, real. I got my new jetpack. There's nothing, you know, natural about flying for a human. Man, it's so annoying that you guys won't let me fly. But, you know, I could be doing worse. I could be a superhero that runs and not just be running around all day. I'm so tired. How many takes of this are we doing? Ah! Uh, action, action! There's a giant set piece that opens the film in Lagos, Nigeria, which is a lot of fun. Our amazing locations team found this back lot, essentially, where we built Lagos, Nigeria, which wasn't an easy feat. When you're able to film in places that are a 360-degree real environment, it allows the cameramen a lot more freedom as to how they frame shots. It allows the stunt guys to really build things in an environment that's real, that gives them scale, so that when you see the film, it's really going to feel as if you've gone to Africa. Yeah. Where are we at? We're back in Lagos. We got Crossbones doing his thing to the Frank Grillo in the house. I thought this would be a great opportunity to have 
just an unapologetic murderous, venomous villain who could kind of stand his ground with these superheroes. I'm sorry, I don't work like that anymore. Get me another f***ing superhero, I'll bang him up too. <laughs> when I saw the costume, I, I was excited. The look of it was kind of post-apocalyptic. It suits the character. Like, when, when I get in the suit, I feel mean. I feel angry. You know, Rumlow has a history with Cap. And when they get to the point where they are about to apprehend him, you know, I know you. You pal, your buddy, your Bucky. Rumble blows up a bomb, trying to blow himself and Cap up. Luckily, Scarlet Witch is close enough where she can contain the bomb with her powers and get it away from them. But it ends up killing a few bystanders. 